tent. And from the top of West Mountain in Scranton, Pennsylvania, good morning, everybody. This is 94.3 FM, The Talker, Sanity Check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike, Frank Sorex in studio. We got X on the line. And you are listeners. You're part of this conversation also. So if you want to uh, blow off a little steam, not that there's any reason to blow off a little steam this weekend, uh, it's 888-577-4487. That number is 888-577-4487. Good morning, Michael. Hey, Lou, question for you. Did you see those eagles last week? Oh, <laughs> you know what? Oh, Will you a- shut up down there in <laughs> Dallas? <laughs> <laughs> for, no, for, no, no, okay, so apparently someone did. <laughs> so, <laughs> for those that are just, uh, well, obviously folks are just tuning in, but we had a little off-the-air conversation, and uh, Frank Sorek here was, uh, the first thing I asked was how the Eagles did, and he went on a rant right off the bat. So. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would bet our listeners are going to want your head on the stick outside the studio later. <laughs> so, Michael, how you doing this week? Well, I'm sorry, Lou? How you doing down there this week? We had a lot going we're, on. We're, we're doing great. Um, it's, we certainly went from cold back to mild again, so that's great. But, you know, Lou, this weekend there's been so much in the news. And, you know, one of the things I just want to get out quick, and it's, you know, we, we have all the issues with immigration and all the issues with, Uber and everything else going on in this country. And I, I just want to make a quick statement, which I think frustrated me most of all with President Obama and the immigration deal. And he, you know, he's quite quote, quoting scripture. He's talking about, you know, what we should do as really good human beings in, of the United States of America. And yet this man continues to allow, in my opinion, the most, the worst atrocities yet, and that's abortion, Lou. And, and he doesn't ever bring up the issue or, or ever have any ideas on that at all. So that's just a statement I wanted to get out there, something <laughs> from my heart. And uh, that's really how I, I'm not one of, of course, uh, Barack Obama's fans as far as, as morality goes, Lou. Well, well, that's good that uh, it's good that you, uh, you know, get out what you want to talk about, Michael. And that's important that we have these conversations because I think the only way we have solutions is having conversations. And I'm going to bring that up a little later on today. Uh, in our show uh, about some of the uh, interaction I've had with uh, Congressman Marino this past week and and the Ron Paul Institute and Gary Johnson and a few others that didn't uh, decided that perhaps maybe having a conversation is not the way to go. But we're going to try to stay on on topic a little bit this uh, uh, this week, Michael. Uh, are we really a nation of laws? And and certainly we have brought this up uh, going back all the way from when we started this uh, show and, and we're into our third year, folks. So that's that's, that's that's quite amazing. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we've said for a long time, Michael, I, I don't believe that uh, we are really a, well, we're a nation of laws. We have plenty of laws on the books, but do we actually follow the laws? And and are those laws meant uh, for you and, and for me and and uh, for our listeners or, or are those uh, are laws uh uh, for the uh, connected, which I don't believe they are. I believe the connected or not. I see Frank shaking his head there a little bit. Go ahead, Frank. Well, good well, morning. We, we've seen, good morning. We have seen time and time again that the politically connected and the, especially the elected, the laws don't apply to them. Either yeah. they're exempt by the law statute itself or, or they're exempt because, well, who's going to enforce it? And, and and I think, Michael, that's one of the things that I, I want to, you know, Definitely weigh in on a little bit here today is because obviously what went on this past week, uh, certainly with uh, uh, Obama, uh, you know, talking about the whole immigration thing. But what can folks do and what can we do here locally? Uh, I want to take a quick uh, call, Michael, and then we can weigh in on some of this. Uh, Liliana from uh, Wilkesbury. Good morning, Liliana. Good morning. Um, uh, hello, everybody. I uh, just a question hello. because um, I have a drop house next uh, to my house in Wixbury that I reported since uh, I bought my house eight years ago constantly. Uh, as I said before, I call uh, the police 75, 85 times already. It's unbelievable. And I saw a car that is a smash car. The car is park um, next to my fence. Um, there is a, is a car that it seems like a, someone uh, hit the car in the front. It's a Nissan car. It's a black car. Uh, the plate is J 
JHD9175. Uh, the plate is hiding, uh, so the car was um, parked in reverse, hiding the plate against the fence. There are fence in the backyard. <laughs> Um, Liliana. It is a very, um, uh, the question is that can the public, because these people are uh, illegal aliens from Guatemala, Mexico, and Honduras, Colombia, and so on, and I know them since a long time ago, and they recognize, and also the police knows that they are illegals. Can these illegals uh, buy these cars to the police department in Wisbury, or if they can do it, uh, well, in it, which way the rest of the public can get connected to them in order that we can we can buy these cars? Maybe they got a, they got a very good deal. Uh, L- L- Liliana, thank you for calling in, and we're going to put our head sleuth on this, uh, Frank Sorek, uh, and uh, uh, Frank will be able to uh, uh, maybe give you some information, and certainly we'll follow up on that uh, uh, later on today. But go right. ahead, Frank. Maybe you could address what Liliana is talking about. I, I did look at a photo, Liliana, of the uh, car in question and saw that it did have what appears to be WVPD markings on the one window. So obviously it either was in impound at one time, uh, possibly purchased out, or perhaps the owner of the vehicle uh, picked it up from impound and had it towed to private property. Uh, Since it has vehicle damage, I would assume that it it must have gotten there after an accident towed by WBPD to its impound lot and then later released, whatever the case may be, whether the car was purchased outright from the owner where it sits now or it belonged to the original owner and they just had it towed back to private property. But once that vehicle is back on private property, it it really is up to the owner to do something with it because if, if it's not spewing fluids or anything like that or causing a health hazard, the city really can't do anything about a vehicle on private property you know, once it's there. So there's little power the city has to do anything with that vehicle once it's back off the public streets. So I hope that answered your question. You know, one of the other things that she just brought up also was was about the drug house. And if you remember, Frank, uh, one of one of our one of the folks that uh, Brenda and I won't right. I won't say her last name. Uh, the only way she was able to uh, even do anything about the drug house was to put up signs in right. Wilkesbury around around the neighborhood saying, "If you want drugs, and this is come where here. to go. Yeah. Please come here." And uh, you know, so you know, it, it's definitely a problem and, and it's stuff that's going on. Michael, uh, there was some news this week uh, about Wilkesbury, certainly, my, and and maybe you just want to touch on it real quick, Frank, because I don't want to weigh in on Wilkesbury. But evidently, you broke a story a, I, I a, 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 about Mayor Layton perhaps running again uh, for for mayor, even though he might have stepped back from that. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. I mean, all I know is I, I received a call from a councilman on Tuesday night following the uh, work session, stating that Mayor Layton called him and another councilman into his office and said, "Hey, I know both of you are running for mayor. I'm also going to run for mayor. Just wanted to let you know." That councilman asked the mayor, can I tell people that? And the mayor said, sure, go for it. You know, real cocky-like. And so he did. He told me, which, you know, uh, via the Gazette's website, I told the world. Right. And the Times leader followed us on that story and said exactly the same thing that we did. And then one of their reporters at Thursday night's council meeting, I was there. The reporter asked the mayor, is there there truth to that uh, story that we published? And the mayor said, yes, I had that meeting. So then he published that, stating that the mayor, in fact, confirmed rumors. And then the mayor called and ripped his face off and said, oh, you must have misunderstood. Even though I confirmed the meeting, I never actually confirmed that I was running for mayor. I just told you that, yes, the meeting took place. <laughs> so, again, we're back to the what the definition of is is. There you go. So, Michael, <laughs> the rule of law. Are we a nation of laws? And, you know, the more I see what's going on here in the courts uh, uh, locally, uh, around the country, certainly immigration laws. We haven't had any laws in immigration for, for uh, I, I don't know how many years, 20, 30, 40 years at this point. And uh, I, I, I find it, um, you know, disheartening for sure, because when, when we lose, when, when there is no justice, and, and we're going to touch on some of the things that happened this week and some of the, uh, you know, in the family courts, and, 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 and when we look at what's happening in Washington, 
I think it's so important that we give people a solution. We have to have a plan and how we're going to otherwise we're all going to explode here and 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 we have to and we have to rely on our representatives to do uh what we're asking them to do in Washington because we can't we can't change what's happening down there. I mean, we could we could have some influence a little bit by our voices and calling these individuals, but at the end of the day, we need to uh, make sure our uh, you know our neighborhoods uh, and and our local courts are following the rule of law and 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 I got to say I, I I don't believe that's the case, Michael. Well, you know, Lou, I look at it so many times and it seems almost that when it comes to enforcing the rule of law that it differs from person to person neighborhood to neighborhood. And it almost, you see things where if, if they feel that the law is easily to enforce upon someone who's not going to do good grief, who's not a dangerous individual, they'll enforce the law. Otherwise, if there's some sense of danger, they sort of back off, or if there's some sense of crying out of racial slurs, they'll back off. So we need to have consistency on where these laws are going to be enforced. Uh, they should be enforced on, on everyone the same way all the time. But we're not seeing that, Lou. You know, looking at uh, some of the custody for cash stuff that we have uh, been reporting on, Michael, and and we have uh, I, I have in my notes, and I'm definitely going to touch on that. But this has to do with rule of law. This really yeah. is what's happening in our local courts. I, you know, sometimes we joke and and you know we make fun of being thrown out of the courtrooms. But so much that's going on right in our backyard, we close our eyes to, and that's and that's something we just can't allow to happen. Certainly, uh, we have some plans moving forward, and and we're going to outline some of that a little bit today, and certainly as we move forward. But you know, the elections are over now. We have new people in in Harrisburg. Uh, some new people. We have forged some nice relationships, I feel, with some of our legislators. And now we we have a plan moving forward. We're going to go down there and maybe get some some legislation introduced, whether it goes anywhere or not. We saw what happened with Smucker. Uh, Greenleaf is the uh, senator that heads up the judiciary down there. Elliot and Greenleaf is a very, very powerful law firm. Uh, senator Greenleaf is, is, is part of that. But I think what we need to do is continue to point these things out and 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 give people a uh, a solution uh, today. Sometime, uh, well, actually, later on today, uh, for the first time, uh, we're meeting. I'm meeting with a team of writers uh, that are going to focus solely on uh, some of custody for cash. And and in fact, we have uh, Nikita from Edwardsville uh, on the line, and and she wants to talk a little bit about custody for cash. I I do not know Nikita. I don't know what she's going to talk about, but uh, uh, welcome to to our uh, show, Nikita. Thank you. Uh, What's on your mind this morning? I'm actually going through a battle. I've it's with my daughter. Um, I have, since January of this year, I've gone through three PFAs that the courts just keep dropping. PFAs? Yes. Yeah. Sessions uh, from abuse. Oh, uh, okay. I, and I just wanted to, you know, the, just These for are, are, Nikki, these are uh, PFAs uh, you filed against someone, or they were filed against you, just for clarification? No, I filed against, uh, on the behalf of my daughter. Okay. Against the father, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay, thank you. Continue, please. Um, they, children and youth has been involved, but they lied. They lied through their teeth. Well, they, go ahead. Uh, the one caseworker that we had with my third PFA, she has come to my house twice already. Well, my hearing was this past Thursday, and that's when they dropped my third PFA. But she lied. She said that um, when she came here to talk to my daughter, she told me that she is consistent with this story and that she was worried about what my daughter was telling her. And um, uh, well, in Nick- court, she, she told the judge that my daughter was inconsistent Nikita, Nikita, um, sometimes our time is short here and what we want to do, and sometimes we could get into, uh, I I, I shouldn't say get into the weeds, because some of these cases 
are so uh, they, there's so much that's going on with these cases, and uh, it, the the, the vol- it could be voluminous with all the information that's coming out, and you know being on talk talk radio sometimes, and and it's not to cut you short, but the whole thing is this is very important. I know it's very important to you, and what what I'm going to ask you is to make sure that you contact us because these are the things that we're we're talking about later on today with uh, with some of our writers uh, and. And, and we're going to encourage not only you, uh, uh, certainly you, you might be, uh, um, you know, talking with maybe folks like uh, uh, Bruce Levine of Voices uh, and, and other individuals out there, you know, parental rights, you know, get involved with some of these groups. But I do want to follow up with you a little bit more on what's happening with your case, because uh, I, Michael, I have some I have some. Uh, uh, some some things I want to bring up this week that's happened. Uh, it's just going to uh, blow your mind, and and it all goes back to the rule of law. Uh, we need to take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue our conversation. Your sanity check Saturday mornings, ninety four point three FM, the Talker. As we roll down this unfamiliar road. And although this wave is stringing us along, just know you're not alone. Cause I'm gonna make this place your home. This is your home, 94.3 FM The Talker. Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike, Sanity Check. Independent Gazette, uh, for folks who have uh, some questions or would like to contact us, uh, you could do it through our website uh, or, or, or contact us uh, direct at editor at wilkesbury-scranton-ig.com. One of the things that I wanted to bring up, Michael, before we bring X on here is, is that uh, uh, being a sponsor uh, for the uh, uh, Lee Height 912 Project, uh, a night with uh, Dr. Ben Carson, December 3rd, uh, that's 7 p.m. at Penn's Peak. Uh, uh, Jim Thorpe. We have a couple. Uh, we have a couple tickets to give away, and uh, uh, I, I understand that uh, Lou and Virginia, I owe you a couple tickets at the Patriot Connectors, and for our friends at Patriot Connectors, uh, thanks for always for not only just listening, uh, but for for the huge amount of support that we get from you. But I have two tickets to give away. Um, uh, if if a caller can get through. Uh, uh, all we're asking is, uh, tell me why, uh, why you want these tickets, uh, for Ben Carson. They're $25 a piece. Uh, we're, we're happy to give them away and uh, tell me, uh, tell me what, uh, 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 Dr. Ben Carson, uh, is interesting to you for. Tell me why I should be, uh, why I should be liking them. So Michael, with these, with this rule of law and, and once again, getting back to, uh, what we're talking about here is: Are we really a nation of laws, and 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 do these laws apply uh, to uh, only us and and not to the connected? And and how does it how does it affect how we look at everything else? I mean, you know, if we don't have law, if we don't have justice, uh, you know, how do how do regular folks? Uh, how does it start affecting you? I know how it's affected me. Um, you know, we start looking at uh, we just start looking at everyday life and saying, you know, what do we have? Is it just influence peddling, or do we really have uh, a, a set of laws to follow? Which we do. We have a blueprint. Uh, certainly in the Constitution, but uh, certainly this past week, it looks like that's been trashed a little bit, too. Michael? Well, you know, Lou, I, I listened to some of the calls that we've already had today and, and the different standards that we have, depending on what kind of neighborhood you live in. You know, I can cite probably 10 years ago a situation in, in Dallas, Pennsylvania, where a man was caught right in public really roughing his kid up. And because he was a, an individual of influence, the, the case was dropped. So that the child who probably needed protecting didn't get it. And yet we have poor folks out there whose children are really loved, apparently, and really there is a different standard on whether you're influential or not, Lou. And, and these are the things that are frustrating to, I know, our listeners who are frustrating to you because you're right there in the front lines looking at it. And somewhere, and I don't know what the answer is, Lou. That's the frustrating part. I don't know what we do to really bring equal justice to all. And that's and, really why I guess the Independent Gazette. And I'm glad you brought that up, Michael. And that's why, once again, 
you know, uh, it's about solutions. How do we fix things? I mean, certainly, you know, when we look at what's happening in, in Washington, D.C., it just seems overwhelming for the, you know, for individuals, say, here in 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 uh, northeast Pennsylvania. But we have to have these conversations and we have to have a plan. And one of the things I think that we need to do locally is, is to not only have these conversations, but have a plan that we could change things locally because the cesspool – uh, of of the court system, and 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 I'll continue to say this. And the more we get into this, the more I realize what's going on and why things are are done in secret. Uh, I want to bring up some of the points that uh, our attorney general just made. Uh, but certainly, uh, are we a nation of laws, and and what can we do about it? Well, our lines are filled again, Michael. But I want to bring X in. Good morning, X. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Hey. Hey. You know, let's always remind ourselves. Uh, for the last 50 years, every uh, pretty much every military adventure the United States has been on has never had a formal declaration of war. You know, this this is kind of a you know part and parcel. You know, if you somehow don't, you're questioning whether laws are in effect or wars exactly. are, uh, laws are being in effect uh, on local level. <laughs> the most important one being, should you go kill people in a foreign land with bombs? Uh, nobody's voting on that. And I think this is part of the problem, X, is, is that we've allowed this to go on, Michael. I mean, you know, we close our eyes to these things that, okay, it's just this, or okay, it's just that. I mean, I remember talking about going into a courtroom in Tunkhannock where they just took, you know, uh, folks like ourselves, their cell phones going through, but lawyers were okay to bring their cell phones in. And I mean, even something on a simple level like that, I went to the sheriff and I said, why are you enforcing this law? And he said, well, the judge said it. The, you know, uh, Shirtliff says that's the law. And I'm thinking, is that what we do? Because Obama now has just made a, uh, a statement, is that the law? Do we follow that law? Do the sheriffs uh, around our country follow that law? I mean, do they, they, they do it blindly? Uh, and what are the solutions? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe Gary, maybe Gary from Mill City would be able to give us some solutions. Good morning, Gary. <laughs> Uh, solutions would be to burn Washington, D.C. down and start all over, I believe. Uh, this latest deal on immigration, and before I even go there, nothing in Washington is going to change. They had a, quite a big turnover, but both parties are electing as leaders the same people that were leading before the election. So right. if you have Mitch McConnell, John Boehner... Nancy Pelosi and Harry Reid still in power, leading the the two houses, uh, House and the Senate. Not much is going to change, and until we send people to Washington that are going to vote against what has been running this country for twenty four, I think Boehner's going to be twenty eight years. Nancy Pelosi close to thirty, Harry Reid close to forty, I believe. Nothing's going to change. Uh, this latest thing with immigration and what, what we're talking about today, laws. Uh, we keep giving amnesty, legal status, to these uh, people that came into our country legal. We already have laws on how to come into our country. They're not enforced. They haven't been enforced in recent history. And rather than enforce the laws, and this goes on all over the country at every level of government, we make a new law. If we would follow our current laws, we would not have this immigration problem again. Simple. But Gary, but Gary, we need more gun laws, too. And we need more laws against Wall Street. I mean, <laughs> I, think, I think he's being facetious there, Gary. <laughs> Yes, yes, I understand that, and, and that's my point on everything. If the gun laws that X just mentioned, if we take guns away from law-abiding citizens, that will stop crime. If uh, we let these illegal people come into our country, our state governments give them driver's license. Now, how do you come into a country and get a driver's license? We give them taxpayer money welfare, housing, schooling, medical care. If Mexico treated their 
illegal aliens if anybody wanted to go there. If Mexico would treat people coming into their country like we do, we could go to Mexico to get away from our problems that our government creates here. But we don't, if we would follow Mexico's immigration laws, we would not have the problems we have in this country. They, and they make it sound like you can't do anything to fix the problem. Well, Gary. Very, well, Gary, I mean, as far as fixing the problem, certainly the problem has existed and we know it's existed. So what, what whatever Obama said, uh, you know, on Thursday, uh, Thursday night, uh, really, it not, uh, to me, nothing has changed. Uh, when we look at solutions, and certainly now that the Republicans are in charge of both the House and the Senate, I hope they do look at solutions and, and do very targeting laws and legislation. You know, start, if for those who feel as though that the, the, uh, securing the borders is, is the most important thing, uh, certainly, I hope that's all they stay with. I hope that the the Republicans uh, in power now send the bill to Obama, not with all kinds of stuff in there, uh, just a very, very targeted solution and say, OK, we want to fix up if, if, if the borders is, is, is the number one concern, then let's fix the borders. And, and I think I think maybe that's where we need to focus. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take a few few more seconds, Gary, what 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 your thoughts are. Very quick, a couple of weeks ago, X stated that uh, the government, all of government, two parties want to bring these people in here. They want to extend green cards and visas. I called a bunch of congressional offices yesterday around the country, talked to young people on the phone. Uh, in Obama's speech, and I don't listen to it anymore, I heard uh, clips of it on the news. The man lies every time he opens his mouth. He talked about the need of extended green cards and visas for the best and brightest of the world. Personally, I want to take care of the best and brightest in our country. And to use that in a speech to the nation is an insult to every person in this college that went to school that is unemployed because of what our government has done to our job market, to say that we have to go out of the country to get the best and brightest. And I'm going to leave on that. Thanks a lot, guys. You bet, Gary. And 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 for those individuals out there that want to uh, continue that conversation with Gary, uh, you can stop at Sidelines in Factoryville and uh, 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 certainly uh, uh, stop in and see Gary there. He's the uh, proprietor of Sidelines in Factoryville. And uh, stop in and uh, you guys could have a great conversation. You both blow off a little steam. Uh, we need to take a break. You listen to Sanity Check. We'll be back in a moment. Joined by Bill DeRosier from Cabot Oil and Gas. Very sharp guy. We'll be discussing the topics, the trends, the news, and the jobs which accompany the greatest natural resources strike in our lifetime. Shale Gas also has its critics, and we're here to talk with you too. Join us for the Shale Gas News with Kevin Lynn and Bill DeRosier. Saturday mornings at 10 here on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Here's what entrepreneurs and business owners are saying about the Business Builders Show with Marty Wolf. Great program. It's like a free business consultation. And it's like an MBA class. I'm Marty Wolf, and the Business Builders Show gives entrepreneurs, business owners, and professionals who seek excellence advice from the nation's top business thinkers and leaders. Listen this Saturday morning at 8 to the Business Builders Show with me, Marty Wolf, on 94.3 FM, The Talker. The answer you're looking for lies right here. Sanity Check with Tea Party Mike, Libertarian Lou, Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM, The Talker. It's all over when I'm wiser and I'm older. All this time I was finding myself in a... But it's all over. Michael, it's a little crazy here today, but that's okay. You're listening to 94.3 FM, the talk of sanity check. Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. We got X on the line. And uh, we got Frank Sorek in studio. And uh, you are callers. And the callers are calling in today. And uh, we're going we're gonna to grab another quick call right here. Patrick, I believe. Good morning, Patrick. Hey, good morning. I got it all figured out. I'm going to get myself deported. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo! That's where, where, it. Where are you going, Patrick? Somewhere warm? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding around here. They don't check, obviously. They, they're going to just give 
blank amnesty to five million people, and they deport people from. I, I know so many people in New Jersey that have come here from Ireland, from France, from from Poland, and I, I have a uh, German Dutch background, and I speak the language very well. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw a brick through my window. I'm going to call my. I'm going to call the police. And tell them I did it, and I'm going to have them arrest me, and I'm going to tell them that I'm an illegal alien, and I get a free airline ticket out of here. <laughs> I've been listening to the news, and I'm sick of this. I'm out of here. Wow. Um, I, 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 this, is, this has gotten beyond acceptable. And uh, if you can't get your politicians to stand up and do anything for you, and on that respect, I'm going to tell you, I really do believe that the politicians in this country are a very accurate and honest, respective view of the American people. They're crooked, they're dishonest, they don't care. And I see it constantly. My neighbors don't know what's going on. They haven't got a clue. They don't want to know. And they just want to vote for a black man or a woman because they're black or they're a woman. If anybody will do, man, I know this guy in South Carolina name's Mr. Will. He's about 87 years old by now, and he is the most intelligent man you'd ever want to meet. He has a third-grade education. He's not going to get elected. The people that do get elected behooves me. And I'm, I'm out of here. You know, I, I spoke, I'm, I'm not kidding. I spoke about my, this with my wife last night on a very serious level. She's not home. She's been away already now for several hours. And when she left this morning, she has to go. She said she's going to go and make up the money that she's going to pay for taxes to take care of the cleanup in Ferguson when the word comes down. Yeah, Your yeah. Turn. So, 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 Patrick, uh, I, I, I think one of the things, uh, uh, and certainly, uh, hopefully, hopefully, once again, uh, we talk about uh, what's happening in Washington. I think Frank and 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 guys that. Sometimes people feel helpless, and I and I, I hear that in your voice, Patrick, that you're just throwing your hands up in the air. Uh, let's see what happens in January. Let's just see if there is some focused legislation that's put into place. But then, once again, I want to come back here, Patrick, and thank you for calling in today. Uh, I want to come back to local stuff, Michael, because that's where we could we, we could have some influence on what's going on here locally. Once again, uh, I'm meeting with uh, our group of writers uh, today, and we're going to focus on the custody for cash issues. And uh, what, what I'm going to ask folks is, is to get involved with that. I mean, that's how we could really make a change here locally. Uh, certainly the custody for cash and, and some of the things that have happened, Michael, uh, I want to touch on what you said uh, a little while ago uh, about the abortion because I have a story about that that has to do with custody for cash. But for those that are not plugged in, maybe that don't normally listen, what happened with our attorney general here this past week w was mind-blowing to me. Um, you know, uh, certainly what she's complaining about, Michael, is that there's been court orders that she cannot uh, do her job. Uh, Miss Kane said court orders going back to March prevented her from discussing the nature of her testimony before the grand jury. Uh, you uh, you know, and, and I'm listening. They just hired Lanny Davis. She hired Lanny Davis to. Uh, oh, to yeah, really. Uh, you can't explain the connection between the emails and the grand jury because there's an order uh, that they're not allowed to explain the connection. And certainly these emails um, these emails have to do with uh, the pornography right. sent to all these uh, 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 government officials, including some of our uh, Supreme Court justices. But I think what she said is very, very telling. And for those that are part of the family court system, that are part of our court system, uh, she said, if this can be done to me as attorney general, I am sickened to think what can be done and may be done to the regular good people who don't have the resources that I have to challenge it. Now, think about that. Right. Here is the attorney general saying that, you know, it sickens her what's being done in the courts. And, and yet, day after day, guys, day after day, folks, that we get, we get calls. We get, I mean, people are thrown, just like the lady that called first thing. I mean, you know, her hands are being thrown up in the air. And what do you do? You can't, Frank, you can't go into the courts because they say they're protecting the children. Right. I mean, and I have to, I have to, Michael, I have to just bring up some of the things. And, and once again, I, I don't, I, I want you guys to chime in here. But just last night. Uh, I brought up a, a, a woman who had a, a few kids, and and uh, she showed up in court pregnant. 
and uh, and and she was told, uh, you know, she was told that uh, uh, she was suggested that she have an abortion because she was too young, and she mm-hmm. told me maybe uh, uh, maybe it, she told the, the CYS off the CYS uh, uh, children and youth. She says maybe that's an option to you, but it's not an option to me. And to, and last night she's saying she's fighting for these children to get her children back. I mean, this past week. Another court, a court thing down in Montgomery County. We wrote a story, uh, millionaire to welfare. That woman was in court, and 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 she's facing uh, jail time unless there was a demand that she retract her statements to the Independent Gazette. Mm. You know, this goes on and on and on. And, and, and folks, once again, we're looking at solutions. What we're trying to do is look at solutions. We can. We can make a difference here. I mean, it, uh, on, on another case, uh, uh, the, the woman wanted to get her transcripts, and they're putting up walls six months to get a transcript, unless it's expedited and you have to pay triple the amount of money to get your transcript. And yet when we go into these courtrooms and get chucked out of, you know, Judge Margie's courtroom, oh, don't worry about it. You know, we have a, we have somebody transcribing it. Well, what good does that do us, Frank? Especially if you can't get a copy of it. Uh, I, I'm flabbergasted by this because I, I thought that would be under right to know law. And someone could order a transcript via the right to know. And and here you go again, the attorney general. Right. If this can again. be done to an attorney general, I am sickened to think what can be done and may be done to regular good people. Exactly. Folks, I'm telling you out there, this courtroom is a cesspool, and we need to start looking at it and start getting people, I guess, coming together around the Independent Gazette. I, I, I know we feel really good about it. We right. keep growing, Michael. We have more folks coming, and and maybe it's a place for people to gather. We we're, we're not asking people to under, you know to to agree with everything we say and everything we do, but there has to be a way and there has to be a solution. I think we have Melanie on line one. Uh, good morning, Melanie. Hey, good morning, guys. How are you? Good. Good morning, Melanie. Uh, so just I wanted to chime in here. You're talking about are we still a nation of laws? Are we still a nation of rule? And, you know, and Patrick's call really, you know, struck my heart because I don't want to see people, you know, give up. Um, you know, losing an election is rough. You know, it's never fun. Um, and you don't, but you, you just can't ever give up. We can't give up. And, you know, I wrote an article yesterday about, um, because I'm, I'm hearing that more often, you know, conservatives are just saying, what's the use? We're, it's, we're, the country's gone. We can't fight anymore. And one place that we, ha- we have to start and pull back from, um, you know, because a lot of the country, they went red. We stayed blue here. Um, and, uh, we, and we're, you know, I understand the, the tepidness on is the leadership actually going to stand up to Obama, and I don't know. But we have to pull back to our roots, to where the Constitution began. And there's a, a huge surge over the last six years. Everybody in Washington is saying, you know, we're a democracy. This is the way democracy works. And we're not a democracy. We're no. a republic. Um, you know, Ben Franklin was asked by uh, Mrs. Powell after the uh, Constitutional Convention ended in 1777, 1787, and she said, so, Doctor, what have you given us, a monarchy or a republic? And he replied, a republic. <laughs> if we could keep, keep it. it. <laughs> right. And we, ha- we have to keep it. Uh, a republic is a government based on the rule of law, and that's our Constitution. That's what they give it. I mean, they were even... You know, they didn't even really have the confidence that, look, this, this might last 10 years. Who knows? We gave it to you. Here, here you go. It's, this is our grand experiment. And it's lasted 227 years since that day. And we have to keep it. And we, we have to be educated and say, you know, why are we not a democracy? Democracy is mob rule out of emotional sentiment and polls and legislators, you know, making their votes out of polls. And we have to pull back from that, and we have to say, now, we are a nation of law. And this is, and that is how we make sure that young mothers aren't being told 
you should get an abortion because you're too young to have a child. It's unbelievable to me, Melanie. And 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 just bringing up a, a couple quick uh, uh, notes here. Thank you for running. Uh, I think it's so important that individuals like yourself do run because regardless of win, lose, or draw, you're you're bringing conversation to the 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 political you know, arena. Right. And I, and, and that to me and why I'm so passionate about having free and equal elections, because we have mm-hmm. to have those conversations. And I'm going to talk about that in our next segment about how, why it's so important to have conversations. Um, but certainly thank you for, you know, for, for you running. And, and, and then once again, because it, it really does make a difference and we have to bring it back local because I think folks will start losing Losing hope if if all we do is turn mm-hmm. to, turn to Washington, uh, uh, that's what we uh, elect our our representatives to Congress for, and um, and and those folks uh, need to hear from us. So, uh, thank you for calling that's in today. Right. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a great day. You bet. Uh, Frank, do you want to jump in, or Michael, or, or X? Well, it, it just it starts locally. I mean, that's where it has to start. You you can't look to Washington and say, well, if we change the president or we change our, our, our Congress or Senate, that's where it's going to start. It has to start at the local level, and it has to work its way out from there. That's how you restore hope. You take one of these local elections, rather it just be getting one person on a, a city council or a school board or wherever – and say, okay, this is going to be the voice of reason when this person's elected. And you move it that way, and it will spread outward. Because once that person is there and starts making the noise that you expect that they will make, then the hope starts to, to build that way. X or Michael? Well, you know, I just want to jump in here. And I think certainly a change of attitude, you know, in our lives, and, and I've been guilty of it myself, is, you know, I look at a situation and say, how can this benefit me? And it's wrong, because, see, our founders looked at it and said, how can this benefit others, the nation, everybody as a whole? And I think that's where we need to change our attitude, Lou, because you see it in Washington, you see it in local politics, you see it in state politics, and we really start, have to start looking at this and saying, how does this help the nation? Not my Medicare, not my Social Security. How does it help the future? And I think this is something we need to focus on. Though. On that note, we need to take another break. You listen to Sanity Check, 94.3 FM, The Talker. Terry and Lou, their Sanity Check, Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM, The Talker. Some nights I stay up, casting in my bad luck. Some nights I call it a draw. Some nights I wish that my lips could build a castle. Some nights I wish they just fall off. But I still wake up, I still see our ghosts, but Lord, I'm still not sure what I stand for. What do I stand for? What do I stand for? Most nights, I don't know anymore. And we're back. 94.3 FM, the talk. Uh, sanity check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. We got X, we got Sorek, and we're going to try to get to the phone calls that are, that are waiting here. But I need to touch on a subject, Michael, that uh, I, I, I wanted to uh, cover a little bit. And these are about not only solutions, but conversations. Uh, if we can't have conversations with our elected officials, surely uh, we will have the frustration that Patrick talked about a little while ago. Uh, this week, Michael, I got a um, uh, uh, an email uh, from uh, the Ron Paul Institute, uh, United U- U.S. House to vote on imposing national ID cards worldwide, in parentheses, for the children. Okay, U.S. House of Representatives scheduled to vote this week on H.R. 3398 legislation stating that it is the policy of the United States government to encourage other nations to require all citizens to have national identity cards. We don't have time to go into all of uh, uh, why I I feel that is so dangerous. Um, Lou, it's for the children. For the children. That's correct. So what I did was uh, I, I called uh, Tom Marino's office, Barletta's, Cartwrights, and uh, two of our local congressmen here, uh, Republicans, uh, Joe Pitts and Scott Perry, who are co-sponsoring this bill. Uh, before the election, uh, uh, you folks will remember that uh, one of the things that I liked about uh, uh, Tom Marino was, was he uh, was very open to us. He was willing to have a conversation. Mm. And... Um, 
to me that 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 is so important and and so anyway so i reached out to uh, all these uh, congressmen and asked them to let us know uh what they had to say about this bill you know is it uh, you know from Ron Paul Institute, the U.S. House to vote on imposing national ID cards worldwide. So I get this back from uh, uh, Congressman Marino, and he says, uh, um, if uh, Representative Tom Maria thinks H.R. 30 think includes nothing about imposing national ID, uh, IDs on people around the world, he either, oh, I'm sorry, this, is, uh, this was a response back from the, the Ron Paul Institute. Let me just get what uh, Tom Marino said. Uh, this has nothing to do with the national ID card. What I am for is making sure the children in the developing world, and particularly girls, have opportunities to participate in the civil society that too often escape them when they are born without any basic birth registrations. Okay, and, um, and then I got back uh, a response from uh, Gary Johnson, which I probably just lost here, but uh, the point was, was that he did not agree with uh, uh, Tom Marino and without getting, uh, oh, okay, here uh, is from the spokesman uh, from uh, Gary Johnson. Uh, while the stated goal of H.R. 3398 to protect uh, and support young women is laudable, the legislation begs the basic question of whether the United States government should be trying to dictate identification and registration practices in other sovereign nations. Many of our own states have uh, appropriately pushed back against the federal government efforts to impose uh, uh, identification requirements. And then, of course, uh, um, we got the response back from the Ron Paul Institute because I had sent uh, Tom Marino's thing there. And he said uh, if uh, and 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 this was this is a little cutting, but this is not really where this is not the point of it. But he said if uh, if Tom Marino thinks uh, uh, H.R. 3398 includes nothing about imposing national ID cards on people around the world, uh, he, he either has not read the bill or has not comprehended what was read. But that's not the point. That's not the point. That's good that we have some some differences here. And I applaud, I really do applaud uh, Congressman Marino for having this conversation. And I'm going to send him what Gary Johnson said and, and what the Ron Paul Institute said. And I expect we will get something back. And this is how we learn. And this is how we inform not only our legislators, but our legislators inform us. Because I'm not a Kool-Aid drinker. I'm not, I, I, I'm not sure that I'm getting all the correct information from the Ron Paul Institute. I'm not saying that Gary Johnson is, is uh, some kind of guru on all the information. Lou, I think personally, you know, in what Mr. Marino said to you, I think a lot of cases, these bills have so much fluff, so much padding, and they're by design buried to confuse our lawmakers and, and what and, marino is saying is he believes what he's voting for is a good thing because it does protect and, and, the children. and that's the point and then what happens is is that these other people chime in and say wait a minute did you look i didn't go into the whole thing because it goes into section three and section four and this is what it says and maybe maybe the whole bill wasn't read that is the point that is a good point and and here but here's the crux of the matter and this is where we as citizens, we as individuals out there, people that want to make a change, why haven't I heard back from Lou Barletta, Cartwright, Pitts, and Perry? Well, and that's my point. And I want, I, you know, I'm going to stay on this on, on Monday again, but I'm going to urge, you know, folks that are listening, call Tim Murtaugh, who's the press secretary for Lou Barletta, or Shane Seaver, the press secretary for Cartwright, and say, what are you guys? Are, are you too good to tell us why you're voting and why we can You see, my whole point here, guys, is, is that if we don't have a conversation, how do we fix things? And and whether uh, you know what I could I could have a, a a real match with maybe Marino over certain things and we talked about the NDAA but that's how we understand what other folks are thinking and that's how we ha- that's how we have an influence on what our legislators our republic like Melanie said that we have a a republic and and these legislators represent us but if they're not willing to have a conversation with us to hear us. I don't care if they eat. We said it all along, and, and, and I think that's the point. Let me take Gary from line one, guys, and then and I'll get you all to chime in on this. Good morning, Gary. 
Uh, good morning. Well, listen, uh, I, I wanted to talk about something else. I'll be quick on what you just talked about, the, the national or international, actually, children's identification. Uh, first off, anytime somebody says maybe the entire bill wasn't read, that sounds an awful lot like the Affordable Care Act. And we're really going to get to appreciate not reading that bill come January with the changes in premium rates. You got that uh, right. And, and, and additionally, how do you impose a law or children's identification? How do you sell that internationally, globally, when in some nations... Female children aren't even recognized, and that happens throughout the Islamic world with Sharia law. So I'll lay those facts out very quickly. Thank what you. I wanted to talk about was an earlier phone call from a lady. I believe the name was either Ileana or Liliana, and, and it was somewhere in the Wilkesbury area. Yes. And this is what I want to emphasize, Will. She does have to be involved politically. There is a mayoral race coming. My understanding is that there's potentially two other candidates to go up against Mayor Layton. If she's got issues in a neighborhood, I think she needs to reach out to those candidates because that becomes part of the political structure for a political debate for a race that will come. Secondly, she has neighborhood watches, crime watches, throughout Wilkesbury, and I don't know her neighborhood, but she does need to get involved, and she needs to continually get involved, and she also needs to attend her, her council meetings down there. And she can't get frustrated, and she can't think she's lost because her continued attendance, her continued presence, and her continued documentation leads the paper trail that forces the political entity to follow up on her concerns. And, and that's what I want to say, Lou. So thank you. Good point, Gary. Good point, Gary. And and go ahead, Frank. G- you're, Gary's you're, absolutely right. Yeah, and we, you got to stay engaged. Yeah, and we do absolutely have, we do. do have a race coming up. Yeah, and, and personally, I, I I know the mayor is backpedaling and saying he will run, then he says he won't run. Who who knows what he will do? And we shouldn't focus on that. The the Democratic primary is coming. The Republican primary is coming, and there will be candidates in those races. And at the end of the day, whoever the candidates are going forward, that's where we'll have to choose. But far too often, Wilkes-Barre just blindly votes or doesn't vote. And that seems to be the big problem here. When you have a city of nearly 40,000 people and only 4,000 come to the polls to elect your, wow. your leader, that's disgusting. Wake up, Wilkes-Barre. Wake up, Wilkes-Barre. Michael and X, go ahead. Anybody? Well, you know, go ahead, I just real simple, let's always remind ourselves the most powerful vote you have is how you spend your money. Do not give your money, money, to anybody or any organization that that conflicts with what your values are. That it will send a bigger thing than a lot of times going to a voting booth. And 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 you kind of threw me a little softball here, but I do want to thank the, you know those individuals that have subscribed to our newspaper to have supported what we've been doing. Uh, certainly, our advertisers. I said I I, I would do a little uh, throw out to uh, Chloe and Company, uh, 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 Made in America, uh, right there in uh, Clark Summit. If you were driving through Clark Summit, stop, stop in and say, hey, hey, listen, I heard these guys on Sanity Check, man. They told us to stop, <laughs> but it goes a long way. And and for all our advertisers and the subscribers and 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 folks that have just written for us and 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 doing the research like we're doing, uh, Michael, I can't say enough for everybody that has gotten on board with uh, what we're doing. And and I think one of the reasons why we are growing and and I think you're going to see an exponential uh, growth uh, uh, come uh, after the first of the year. You know, it is, and we have to look at you know all the pl- the pauses that happened in the last two, three years, you know, and the influence just that a small group of folks can do just in Wilkesbury through the Independent Gazette. So these are things that we can do when we get together and we, and we try to make a difference rather than sitting home complaining about it. Really. And, 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 and for our listeners out there, please, you know, uh, if get a hold of, of Tom Marino and thank him. Say, listen, I, you know, I heard these guys, and, and even if we disagree on an issue, thank you for at least responding. But then also call Cartwright and Barletta and say, what the heck's wrong with them? You know, I mean, you know, give them a buzz and say, you know, what are you guys, too good? You're too good to talk to anybody? You're not, no, you I've know, got the answer, Luke. Yeah, I know you do, Frank, but we're down <laughs> to 40 seconds. Michael, you got our last word. Hey, God bless all, and particularly the Eagles this week. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. We'll see you guys next week.